I don't want to mess up my hair. <laughs> all right, I want to make sure that all of my audio recording levels are, are okay. So if you could begin by just telling me your name and your title, please. I don't have a title. <laughs> okay. I'm retired. All right. Um, what maybe okay. what group you're with? Okay. My name's Karen Moffitt, and I'm a volunteer with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And it's M O F F I T T. Right. K A R E N. Yes. All right. So Karen, let's begin. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network is planning for for the this voter. Um, this voter registration, this voter, uh, this election period. <laughs> if one American can fight cancer, a nation can rise up to defeat it. So the cancer, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network is working to educate the public and elected officials on the importance of making cancer a national priority. And so this is our Cancer Votes campaign to make sure everybody understands that their votes count in the battle against cancer. How can someone who's a voter make their vote count? What kinds of things can they look for in elected officials and in ballot initiatives? Well, this year, 1.6 million Americans will be diagnosed with cancer. 117,000 are right here in Florida, and 46,000 will die. So it's important that our cancer research continues the funding. You know, this month we've just done the Susan Coleman race and we've got the American Cancer Society's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Well, we can run around in circles till the cows come home and we won't raise the necessary funding. The American Cancer Society is the largest funder of cancer research in the nation after the federal government. And we raise and spend $100 million a year. The federal government spends over $3 billion a year that it funds in cancer research. So you can see there's a tremendous difference and we're making so many strides. Every day you see breakthroughs in cancer research. Even with the Nobel Prize winners announced today, you see we're making strides. So to kind of let this go now is a waste. Our elected officials in Washington decide how much money is going to be spent on cancer research. They specify the specific budget, so it's important that we look for people and ask them, ask our candidates, what are your plans? What do you believe in cancer research funding? You also have on your website, it mentions access to affordable health care, protecting seniors with cancer, helping low and middle income Americans fight cancer, and voting in terms of cancer prevention. How can people do that when they are thinking about the candidates that they're going to the polls to vote for? It's easy. We can ask them where they stand. We know that 60% of people who get cancer are over age 65. So we need to make sure that Medicare programs are in effect and, and effective to protect our seniors in their battle against cancer. So we can ask our candidates, what is your stand on Medicare? On Medicaid, right now, one million Americans rely on Medicaid for their cancer care, for whatever reason that they are on Medicaid. We need to ask our candidates, what are your plans to ensure that people who need the cancer care through Medicaid, there's still the funding for them to access the care they need. With the, it's become quite evident in these discussions on Obamacare with pre-existing conditions that we ask our candidates, what are your plans for insurance coverage to make sure that pre-existing conditions are covered? I've spent a career working with children with cancer. You know, you're diagnosed with leukemia at age three, you're out of luck for getting insurance for the rest of your life. So we need to make sure that pre-existing conditions are covered. We need to just ask our candidates, what are your plans? What do you want? As far as cancer prevention, the CDC is very great in obesity and tobacco cessation cancer prevention programs and early detection programs such as breast and cervical cancer. 
you know, they spend $300 million a year on these early detection and prevention programs. We need to make sure that there's still access to that. So it's asking our candidates, where do you stand on these issues? We forget, I'm a Moffitt member of the Moffitt family. People often come up to me and thank me for Moffitt Cancer Center and what it's done to save members of their family. In 1981, the Florida legislature is the one that decided that they were gonna step forward create and fund the Moffitt Cancer Center. This was a political legislative decision that's saving hundreds of thousands of lives right here in the Bay Area. So we forget when we're thinking about cancer that our politicians actually affect our lives when it comes to cancer. Okay, well, Moffitt, thank you so much for joining us on WMNF News today. Thank you. Sorry, we have